Hi, dear friends. As prelims 2023 is very near to us, let's quickly go through these topics and some important potential questions, okay, from history and culture. Yeah, <clears throat> recently, Amadmi Party led this Delhi Assembly passed an amendment on this uh, Delhi Sikh Gurudwara Act 1971, recognizing Takht Damdama Sahib as the fifth Takht of the Sikhs. Okay, that is the current affair. Now you see how the question is built on that. Consider the following statements. A Takht, which means a throne, is a seat of temporal authority for Jain Tirthankaras. Takht is, yeah, literally mean it is a throne, is a seat of temporal authority for Sikh, it is not related to Jain Tirthankaras. Okay, it is not related to, it is not related to Jain Tirthankaras, it is related to, it is related to Sikhs. So, Taktis, it is a throne, or, or it means a throne, or it's a seat of temporal authority for Sikhs. Okay, that is the exact definition to Takt. There are five Sikh Takts, three in Punjab and one each in Maharashtra and Telangana. Now, if you know the basics of Sikhism and the geograph geographical spread of Sikhism, you can easily find uh, which one is right, which one is wrong. Okay, so when it comes to Sikhism, obviously, yes, uh, Punjab is there, Maharashtra is there, Guru Govind Singh, Bihar is there. Okay, and no connection with the Telangana. So here both are wrong. The five Sikh Takht, three in Punjab, one in Maharashtra and one in Bihar. Okay. There is another topic, the Shapras, sorry, Sherpas of the G20 countries and invitees from countries and international organizations recently visited the famous Kumbhalgad Fort in Udaipur. Okay, Sherpas, it's actually ethnic groups in this Nepal and this Tibet and they are mountaineers or they are expert in this uh, mountaineering and they are they act as guard and tremendous to these uh, mountain climbers, okay. So here these Sherpas are diplomats, high skilled diplomats representing personal representatives of various uh, like uh, heads of governments, okay, participating in this G20 uh, countries uh, summit. So here there is a Sherpas of G20 countries and invitees from countries and international organization recently visited this famous Kumbhalgad Fort. So Kumbhalgad Fort is historical and cultural relevance is important for this year. Yes, the question can be like this. Fort was built in the 4th century AD by this Rana Kumbha. So you know that if you know the history of Rajaputs, we know that the history of Rajaputs in India, it begins from this uh, yeah, mid of the 7th century. 7th century uh, AD, okay, it is almost from mid of the 7th century AD, so there is no uh, no way it is connected with the 4th century AD. If you basic, if you know the basics of the chronology of various ruling dynasties of ancient and medieval times, you know, you can easily, you can easily find that the first one is wrong, okay. So, uh, yeah, Rana Kumbha, that all, almost, you know, belonging to this, uh, yeah, 16th century, or oh, sorry, 15th century AD, okay. Now, it is the second longest wall of the world after the Great Wall of China. That is a true fact. That is a true fact. It is strategically located on the western Aravalli Hills. So, if you know that uh, mountain ranges of India, this is also answerable. Okay. That if you know these Aravalli ranges, Vindhya ranges, Satpura ranges, if you know these mountain ranges of India, yes, if you know that basic geography, yes, you can answer this. Okay. So here, the first statement is wrong because it is not in the 4th century, it is in the 15th century AD because even the history of Rajaputs in India, it starts from 7th century AD or mid of the 7th century AD only. Now it is the second longest wall of the world after this Great Wall of China, which is true. It is strategically located on the Western Aravalli Hills. Of course, if you know the basic geography, that is answerable. So 2 and 3 are answers here, okay? Now, Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurates uh, Sant Thukram Shila Mandir in the temple town of this Dehu in Pune district. So, the Maratha, you know, Bhakti saints or the very popular Bhakti saints of Maratha state, which is important for you, Sant Thukram. Sant Thukram, you try to understand which of the following is not correct regarding Sant Thukram. The question is, which of the following is not correct regarding Sant Thukram? ABCD statements are there composed a Marathi genre of literature called Abanga poetry, which fused folk stories with the spiritual themes. Straight away the fact, it is simply correct only. First statement is correct. Yes, a composed a Marathi, Marathi genre of literature, which is called the Abanga poetry, which fused folk stories with the spiritual themes. That is true. 
now he was the contemporary of akbar no way you know that uh, he is contemporary of shivaji okay shivaji is contemporary of aurangzeb akbar means 1556 to 1605 shivaji means 1630 to 1680 okay so he was a contemporary of shivaji he was a contemporary of shivaji not akbar now he is considered as the greatest maratha bhakti reformer he made the vidoba cult popular the monotheistic culture or bhakti tradition which is against rituals and sacrifices okay that is a version of this devotional worship or a bhakti worship okay so all this you know a is correct c is correct d is correct but uh, bombay is not correct you know the contemporaries is again a popular question in upsc prelims from history okay so he was contemporary of maratha uh, you know uh, ruler shivaji the great Yes. Next topic. Recently, Defence Minister of India unveiled the statue of Veer Durga Das Rathore in Jodhpur. Veer Durga Das. Veer Durga Das Rathore. Yes. Of course. Now the personality is important for prelims. You know, this way a description-based question also can be asked. Just look into this. This is a description-based question. Yeah. He was the Rathore Rajput General of this uh, Kingdom of Marwar and uh, had defied our Angus Sahib, a famous warrior credited with the spearheading the fight against Mughals. So one of the Rajputs. Yes, who constantly fought against the Mughal sovereignty, Mughal supremacy, commanded Rathore forces during Rajput War, played a major role in this Rajput Rebellion, which became one of the main reasons for decline of the Mughal Empire. He was elected as the leader of the revolt along with Raja Jai Singh, second of Jaipur. So, one of the very prominent figure is who spearheaded a war against these Mughals, or you know, his his rebellion is one of the major reasons for this decline of the. Mughal Empire. Okay, so this way a description can be given, and UPSC will ask the question: Yes, uh, who among the following personalities being described in the above passage or in the above test? You know that way they can ask. So just get an idea. Just get get the basic description on various personalities when they are in the news. Now there is another personality. Yes, Prime Minister recently paid tributes to Rani Velu Nachir on her birth anniversary. Now you should know who is this Velu Nachir. Okay. Rani Velu Nachir. Yes, these points, these facts are important for you. She was first to come to fight against British colonial power in India. So it is not Jansi of, uh, uh, you know, I mean, it is not uh, this Lakshmi Bai of Jansi. In fact, it is yes, Rani, Rani Velu Nachir. She was regarded as the first to come to fight against British colonial power in India. She is known by Tamils as uh, Veera Mangey. Veera Mangey. Who is regarded as Veera Mangey? Yes, that is Rani Velu Nachir. and she was princess of this uh, ramanandapuram and only child of raja yes uh, chellamuttu vijaya vijayaraga yes what is that name vijaya uh, vijay ragunada sethupadi it's a huge long you know it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lengthy name yaar yes uh, she was the only child of raja chellamuttu vijaya ragunada sethupadi and uh, that uh, uh, rani of ramanad kingdom she was trained in war to match weapons usage martial arts even she is an expert in shilambam shilambam martial arts okay she was a scholar in many languages she has proficiency in this french english and urdu she married to this king of shivagangai so she was regarded as the rani of shivagangai and uh, succeeded her husband in 1780s and uh, yes you see she finally she fought this war and finally died in Uh, December twenty fifth, seventeen ninety six. So she is regarded as Veera Mangey, and she is regarded as the first queen to fight against British colonial power in India. Now this Rani Abakka Chowda, she was the first Tuluwa queen of Ullal, and she fought the Portuguese in the latter half of the sixteenth century. Okay, she belonged to Chowda dynasty, which ruled over parts of coastal Karnataka. Then the port town Ullal was their subsidiary capital. Ullal was strategically placed because of which Portuguese made several attempts to capture it, but the Kuren repulsed their attacks over four decades, almost to forty years. She came to known as Abhay Rani because of her bravery. So you know, this is a description given to this uh, particular woman, Rani Abakka Chowda. Abakka Chowda, yes, so she belongs to this Tuluwa dynasty. Okay, Chowda dynasty. She belongs to Chowda dynasty. Uh, and that is uh, that is you know, the reign is uh, coastal Karnataka, uh, Tulu Tulu Nadu. and of course she fought that she 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 like a safeguarded this ulul you know from the portuguese for almost uh, uh, four decades so those points are very important just this description is given and you are uh, you are asked to answer or you are asked to find out the personality if such questions are there you must be very clear with the personality 
then again some unsung heroes recently government commemorated these uh, like uh, unsung heroes of india freedom fight you know freedom struggle there is gulab kaur she was freedom fighter with the gadar party so there are certain personalities great uh, women personalities women revolutionaries involved in revolutionary activities across india both india and abroad so there is uh, gulab kaur she was freedom fighter within gadar party and she was in charge of printing that uh, revolutionary magazine okay the party literature also known to give speeches on these uh, boards to indian passengers okay so she was a lady associated with the gadar party revolution and see gadar the the gadar the the yes gadar the the gulab gaur this is a book written by yes kesar singh so this can be asked here the books and others so you try to understand this is about this uh, uh gulab Ka gulab gaur and this book is gadar the the gulab gaur this is written by yes kesar singh now there is uh, chakli lamma chakli lamma was a revolutionary woman who fought against injustices of zamindars so she fought against the zamindars during telangana rebellion events are very important her fight is against this uh, uh, injustices of zamindars and it is during telangana rebellion in the mid of 1940s you already studied telangana rebellion she was a member of andhra mahasabha yes she was one of the first two women to dismantle supremacy of the feudal lords okay so yes the fight for land the fight for the rights over the land or the fight against the zamindari fight against the injustices of zamindari if you consider that case there are some personalities one of them is chakli lamma she was a revolutionary woman she fought against injustices of zamindars during telangana rebellion she was a member of andhra mahasabha and first women to dismantle supremacy of feudal lords of telangana so these are some factual informations i just read it out because you know in history there are lots of factual questions also being asked you know not only in history in other subjects also coming to prelims you can expect your factual questions they can simply twist and turn these uh, facts you know and can confuse you so be clear with the factual informations on different personalities akamacharyan she is again she another popular personality uh, she is she is you know a freedom fighter from travancore kerala uh, she was given this jansi rani of travancore by mahatma gandhi that question can be just look into the last 10 years questions yaar so many factual questions being asked okay so there you can expect a question who is regarded as or who was given that title jansi rani of travancore by mahatma gandhi it is akamacharyan then to see her nation free she quit her job she was a teacher by profession okay and she joined this india's freedom struggle movement uh then you see that october 1938 kamma was entrusted by travancore state congress to organize yes desha sevika sang desha sevika sang which is female volunteers corps so she is a woman she is a women freedom fighter she is an inspirational leader of the indian freedom struggle from travancore state of kerala and she was given that a jansi rani of travancore by mahatma gandhi okay now there is another popular incident which is known as mangad massacre this mangad massacre again why it is in the news just look into that yes a horrifying tragedy occurred uh, that is you know mangad killing more than 1500 bill tribes on 17th november 1913 mangad hill lok situated at the gujarat rajasthan border border known as adivasi jallian wala bag so upsc can ask a question which is regarded as an adivasi jallian wala bag massacre you know that is mangad massacre in which yes more than 1500 bill uh, you know like uh, uh, tribal people being killed by this british okay so recently the nation remember nation remembered this particular incident paid tribute to that great martyrs now see bills try to understand it is a tribal community bills a tribal community faced great troubles at the hands of both the royal princes and the british east india company they suffered at the hands of royal princes and this royal princes and this british east india company okay or the the colonial rule of british that is their land reforms or maybe their what is called a uh, law and order reforms or maybe their judicial reforms or maybe their revenue reforms many things you know eventually yes uh, like uh, exploited these uh, bill tribes okay the the agrarian tribes being exploited by british land revenue policies or maybe their law and order policies etc so these bills tribal community living in this rajasthan or this uh, gujarat rajasthan border they faced to so many uh, like 
financial exploitation, fiscal exploitations, or different types of exploitations in the hands of princely states and this British colonial rule. The great famines further worsened their situations and British government never initiated any welfare schemes to improve their condition. Then finally, under leadership of this Guru Govinda Giri or uh, Govinda Guru, Bills placed a charter of 33 demands in front of this British, but the British, you know, rejected. The demands included, yes, uh, yeah, something, re relaxation or releasing from this forced labor or this high taxes, reduction of these high taxes or maybe this freedom from harassments of, uh, uh, harassments of the tribes, okay. So these are some genuine demands placed before this British government, but they rejected. British then asked Bills to leave this Mangad Hill before this 15 November 1913, but they are not ready to like uh, accept or they are not ready to follow the British order. Then uh, what happened, you know? Yes, uh, finally British Indian Army fired indiscriminately on these Bill protesters and it is believed around 1,500 people, including women and children, died in the tragedy. So this is popularly known as Adivasi Jallianwala Bagh massacre. Okay, this is Mangad Hillok, which is situated at the Rajasthan Gujarat Gujarat Rajasthan border, where you can see yes, that is in 1913 you can see yes, November 17th, 1913. Yes, more than 1,500 uh, Bill tribes, you know, including women and children, being uh, fired by this British, killed by this British. Then another incident, uh, recently Bihar Chief Minister announced uh, 15th February would be commemorated as, you know, Shahid Divas in memory of 34 freedom fighters who were killed by police in this Tarapur town of this Bihar's Munger district. That is another tragedy. That is another tragedy. You take care that uh, this is another popular incident. Okay, this is Tarapur massacre. You try to understand this is another incident you have to go through. It's important for this year because recently Bihar CM yes, uh, I mean announced that uh, this uh, 15th of February would be yes uh, commemorated as uh, Shahid Divas. That is to that is to pay respect to or that is to pay homage to these uh, 34 freedom fighters being killed by British police in Tarapur town. Okay. 90 years ago. So this happened on 15th of February 1932. A group of young freedom fighters planned to hoist an Indian national flag at Tana uh, Bhavan in Tarapur, in Munga district. So the contest is very simple. You see, Gandhi Irvin Pact, you know, that is collapsed. You know, roundtable conferences. You see that uh, yeah, Indian demands rejected, or you can see that there is failure of Gandhi Irvin Pact. Then this arrest of Indian leaders and uh, British deliberately. You can see that uh, they, they uh, took initiatives to suppress the civil disobedience movement. Okay, that contest you can see that uh, yes, a group of these young people, young freedom fighters, they plan to hoist an Indian national flag at Chitana Bhavan in Tarapur. In that contest you can see that uh, yes, there is an encounter between these uh, people and these uh, British police and finally, what happened here? Police were aware of this plan. I mean these freedom fighters in that particular contest, stadium contest you see, they decided to hoist a flag. They decided to hoist a Indian national flag in these uh, British government buildings there. And these uh, British police were aware of the plan. And uh, a 4,000 strong crowd pelted these police with stones, injuring an officer of the civil administration. Okay, you see that the 4,000 young freedom fighters uh, pelted these British police with stones. And in reaction to that British, what they done? Yes, they opened this indiscriminate fire on the crowd. They started, they started fire on the crowd. Uh, after 75 rounds of firing, you see 34 bodies being found. Many uh, accounts say that uh, the number is even uh, higher than that uh, 34. Okay, so you see that uh, almost 34 bodies being found dead after this firing. Uh, so you see that incident is Tarapur massacre. That is that is again in the news, and you have to go through. This is again important for this year. Okay. So take care, take care this incident. I mean, UPC can ask a question like this. I mean, Tarapur incident uh, associated with which of the following uh, event, you know, maybe NCM, CDM, Kit India, or this Bengal partition, Sodeshi, or 1857 revolt. So the contest can be asked. Or maybe the particular community, tribes, or leaders involved in that, that can be asked. Or the contest can be asked. Or maybe the basic objective of such uh, uh, agitations can be asked, okay. So, or the highlights of such events can be asked. So, just cover them very quickly. And in art and culture also, some important topics are there, which I have done in another video. 
So just make sure that you might have covered it, then it is good, fine, no issues. If not, then just go through them very quickly. No need to do research on that. In half an hour, you can finish them, okay? Just very quickly, you finish, you go through these uh, various, like, uh, cultural topics, which is in the news recently. Just go through them quickly. Just get the basics. Enough, 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 okay? That's it. Go through it. All the best. And don't be, don't be worried so much. Don't be tense to so much. Just be cool. Keep on revising, practicing the questions. Listen to some warm music, some cool music, or whatever you are, like, you know, favorite things. You spend some time for your leisure activities. Make yourself calm, cool, and, uh, you know, give this exam. Practice very well. That's it. Thank you.